probably a month or two back now. You were on like ESPN then for one of the big events, right? What was like that experience kind of like? Yeah, so that was um, that was one of the the major events that we had, and so it was uh, it was ESPN. It was down in Fort Jackson. It was the last event prior to cool. Worlds, and um, and yeah, that was that was a surreal experience. Honestly, um, I what, what's funny is I'd had a really busy couple of weeks at work. Um, so typically, you know, the summer is a little bit slower for accountants, but I've had a couple of things pop up this past summer that made things really busy. But um, so unfortunately, I didn't get a lot of prep time going into that event, and um, you know, at, at first I. I thought uh, that wasn't going to work in my favor, but I think looking back, it kind of did because I kind of, I didn't really have any expectations going down there. Um, Mm. And uh, because again, I wasn't, I felt like I was, you know, prepared enough, but it wasn't like I was dialed in and I had all these expectations. I needed to make it to this round or make it to this point kind of thing. And so, uh, so that was down at the Fort Jackson army base, just outside Columbia, South Carolina. Um, It was in July. uh, So South Carolina in July is hot. (laughs) So there was uh, a lot of double gloves and chalk and stuff just to try and keep uh, the hands uh, to not from sweating and to to not throw the club into the, into the forest there. But um, yeah, honestly, I just, again, kind of went out there, didn't have a lot of prep, so kind of got to the range a little bit early on the first day to just try and see if I could find something. And, uh, and you know, one thing that's always worked for me is, you know, you can't get too technical, I think, with these events. You kind of just got to go out and compete, I think. You know, whatever is mm-hmm. working for that day is, is whatever you got. I think sometimes people try and find something on the range and they panic if they don't, but you know, see if you can find something that works. But if not, you just got to go out there and compete. And so I think that's kind of what I did. Um you know, it was definitely tougher conditions a little bit. It was a, it was an interesting grid, but it was a fairway grid. Um, so it was on a golf hole. And because I have a little bit of a golf background, I feel like that always favors me versus some of the guys that aren't really golfers. I know they, they much yeah. more prefer a typical, like a mesquite where it's like more of like a soccer field or something that just yeah, doesn't yeah. really resemble a golf hole. Um, but yeah, just, you know, just kept advancing, you know, had, uh, had a couple of timely things go my way where I had a good ball and someone had a bad ball and it kind of jumped me up in the standings. But, um, yeah, next thing you know, I'm uh, I was in the the, the top sixteen and, and ended up battling into the final eight, which which was the match play, which uh, again was kind of a surreal feeling to uh, to be in my first match play and um, and to be uh, yeah. uh, as part of like the television coverage because you know I even um, you know back in like the early two thousands, I'd always watch Long Drive when it was on the Golf Channel. You'd see it, and uh, I always thought it was really cool under the lights with all the TVs and stuff. And uh, yeah, so to go out there mm-hmm. and to be able to compete and to watch it back on television and stuff with my family was was really really cool um unfortunately didn't get the win but you know lost to kyle berkshire which you know when he's going uh, 230 yeah. <laughs> miles an hour uh with the competition ball and he hits a good one there's not a whole lot you can do but you know at least if you're going to lose to a guy maybe it's that guy mm-hmm. so um but no it was awesome and like i said it was on the, the fort jackson army base and so they had wheeled in a bunch of like uh new recruits who were going through basic training and stuff and so it was a pretty raucous oh, cool. environment uh with all the fans yeah, and stuff that. like that and uh and it, and it was a great experience honestly i uh it was funny because after you win a match, you go and do a quick interview. Um, so I was, I went off to the side to do an interview with Alexis Belton and, um, it was funny when we were going to watch it back a few weeks later, I was like, I know I got interviewed, but I have no idea what the question was. And I have no idea what my response was. I think I just blacked out. So when we were watching it back, it was like, I was watching it back for the first time. Cause it was like, I knew I got asked something, yeah. but so much adrenaline and so much, um, you know, all the nerves and anxiousness. I had no idea um, what I had said, but, uh, <laughs> but was also interesting about that too, was, you know, we're so used to being on the tee with a bunch of other guys, uh, you know, whether it's four different guys, typically all at the same time. But for that, because it was mm-hmm. the TV coverage, they wanted to do one guy at a time. So that just made it a whole extra level of nervousness when you're up there by yourself and like all the eyes yeah. are on you, that sort of thing. So, but no, it was a great experience. It gave me a lot of confidence going into the world championship and, and had a good finish there as well. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's kind of just, you know, it's given me that sort of boost to, to know that, uh, that I belong sort of with the top guys and, and, uh, it validates a lot of the hard work, um, that I, that I put in this past season. So, um, you know, definitely going to help leverage some of those last finishes here this past season to, to drive me into next season. Cool. How does the, uh, the golf ball work then? Does everybody have to use the same type? 
Yeah, so we use um, we use the Bridgestone E9 long drive, so you can actually go and buy it okay. at Golf Galaxy or whatever. Um, but mm-hmm. I think when Bryson got involved, I know he was involved with Bridgestone at the time uh, back when he got involved, I think, in mm, gotcha, uh, a yeah. handful of years ago. And, and they helped uh, in collaboration with a, a couple of the other long drive professionals. They helped develop the golf ball. So um, it is, it, it's interesting gotcha. because the ball before was the Volvic ball, which was a very high compression golf ball. So it was, it was very firm, and so the speed translated. Um, but I think it was very low spin because of the matte finish. And so you know, a lot of guys were hitting knuckleballs and stuff was kind of falling out of the mm. sky. The Bridgestone yeah. ball is much more lower compression. So speed translates, but not, it doesn't translate as well as maybe like 110 compression. I think it's like 80 compression. I could be completely wrong, but I think that's roughly where it's at. So it's firm, but not, you know, not insanely firm. Um, but yeah. I think the dimple design and the aerodynamics and the core in the ball are built for, like a, a flight, like a penetrating and efficient sort of ball flight. So, um, but yeah, we all use the same ball. There's a bunch of different colors, usually depending on what slot you're hitting in, but it's, uh, it's all the same ball that everybody yeah, yeah. uses, um, which, uh, which also makes it nice too. Cool. So what's like some goals you have set for yourself for 2025? Yeah, it's, uh, honestly, uh, to be honest, finishing uh, at world number 10, the top ranked uh, Canadian and top ranked international guy was definitely not on my bingo card going into this year. I think, I think <laughs> I started the season at like 46 or something. So I think I was aiming for the top 20 to start this year. And now, now I'm at here. So um, I don't want to maybe set the bar too low, but, uh, but, you know, we'd love to keep climbing the ranks. Um, you know, it's, it definitely becomes a challenge when you start to get to the top, but you know, now I've had enough events where I'm starting to accumulate points and starting to catch up on the guys that had a, a uh, year and a half sort of jump on me from like a points and an events uh, accumulation. So, you know, would hopefully keep climbing mm-hmm. the points. I don't want to put a number on it, but you know, would love to obviously inch towards that, that number one spot and keep the the top ranked international and, and Canadian uh, competitor spot, which I take a lot of pride in. Um, but also want to get a win. I want to get my first win. Um, you know, I think these last few events, finishing third at in Fort Jackson and finishing uh, tied for third at Worlds, um, made me realize how close I actually was to that, um, to, to finally getting that win and, and seeing uh, seeing the guys that win, knowing that I can compete with those guys uh, kind of wants me to, to get the job done, um, which can be easier said than done, obviously, especially uh, when you get into the match play yeah. because it's it's one set and you never know what could happen, especially at our speeds, right? Some You could, you could have a really bad set mm-hmm. or maybe you get lucky and and the guy ends up going out of bounds or whatever but uh but yeah so keep climbing the ranks um and uh and definitely get a win or or maybe more than one win would be uh would be awesome but that's that's definitely the goal for for next season thanks for watching today's episode to see more of our content be sure to follow us on instagram tiktok and subscribe on youtube we can be found at basic bogeys on all platforms thanks we hope to see you on the next one